Yes. So moved. Second. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We have some people here in attendance. Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad to see people in the audience. Um, at this time, we have the public comment section, and it's not, oh, it's not an open public forum. Speakers may address topics on the agenda, items specified for public comment, or items within the scope of the school committee's responsibility. Would anyone like to say anything during the public comment section? Sure, come on up. Yeah, that mic right there. And then you just need to state your name and address. Please. So I'm Tim Graham, Three Beacon Street. So I'm here uh, on behalf of my daughter Sophie in support of the volleyball, which is on the agenda tonight. I'm also the uh, treasurer of the boosters. Um, so just want to uh, pass along the amount of time and effort that's been put in on this uh, agenda item. I want to thank Patrick, our athletic director, for working closely with us on this. There's been a lot of girls that have been uh, looking forward to this. They had a meeting maybe a couple weeks ago. Fifty-six some of the girls attended it. Um, Sophie moved, uh, I married about a year or so ago. Sophie moved, this is her first year in town. She came from Walpole, and had a very well established volleyball program. She's had a successful first year in the school along with her sister Claire. And one of the things I promised her when she came in that I would do everything in my power to help out to, to get uh, volleyball as one of our sports in town. I've raised three boys, uh, two, my second of which just graduated from the school district. Um, there's nothing like playing for your hometown and the sports that you love and wearing the blue and gold. And I want the same opportunity for my daughters as well. So I ask that you guys support that measure tonight. Um, I made a commitment to, to, uh, to John and to Patrick and to the girls that I would do whatever I could. So I joined Boosters. I will fundraise any way I can. I'll do whatever I can to support it so that the, the girls have a great experience. Um, hockey was a great success for the girls. I want to see the girls have the same thing with volleyball. So I hope that you guys support that measure tonight. Uh, I look forward to, to supporting Sophie and the girls going forward. Uh, and hopefully my youngest daughter, Claire, will join as well. So I, I thank you for your time. I appreciate you bringing up this uh, as an agenda item tonight. Uh, and again, I look forward to moving forward with it. It's a quick turnaround. starts in the fall. It's a fall sport. So um, again, anything you guys can need from boosters or, or me uh, individually, I'm, I'm more than happy to help. So I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, I have... Uh, the Superintendent Evaluation Subcommittee may meeting minutes from May 17th, and um, I would take a motion to approve. That was um, Gordon, Rob, and myself. I would take a motion to approve those minutes from May 17th, which I left on your um, mm -hmm. seats there. Uh, so moved. Moved by Gordon. Second. Second by Rob. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And then I would... Um, take a motion to approve the policy subcommittee meeting minutes from June 4th and that was um, just Trista and myself so moved moved by Trista I'll second it um, all in favor aye. aye thank you thank you Trista um, and then the only other thing I have under that is uh, I'm trying to schedule a workshop for us on the school committee and um, so I have the following dates that were given to me so I was wondering what date might be the best or work the best for everyone. Um, I tried for some dates the end of July, but those dates didn't work out for the person doing the workshop. Um, so I have August 1st, which is a Thursday, August 3rd, which is a Saturday, and August 6th, which is a Tuesday. And um, the person, I'm trying, it, it would be probably around two or three hours. And uh, well, obviously the Saturday one will be in the, probably during the day or in the morning or something. And then if it was Thursday or Tuesday, it could be day or night. Um, so, I mean, you don't have to get back to me today. You can get back to me by the end of the day, Monday. Okay. Well, I just let you know, I'm taking a course the end of July through the beginning of August. Um, travel home 
on Tuesday the 6th, so I could make a meeting that night, I'm sure. But Maybe I could shoot for the 7th? If everybody was, if that's, if everybody was. Those first two dates don't work for me, but I can do the, I can do the 6th, <coughs> too, or the 7th, so. Okay. Yeah. Just at night. I couldn't do during the day. <coughs> Yeah, I'm okay. not exactly sure. What, I, can't, I haven't nailed down my schedule yet, personally. And I was curious, I think we talked about this earlier, too. Is there a possibility of using Doodle? Does that go into violation where we could just throw the dates out there and people can check box? Usually I just send an email or ask at a meeting, but we won't have any meetings before then. So I, right now I have eight, uh, August 7th at night is what the date that I'm going to shoot for. Right? So we're not doing the 6th? Uh, what, Gordon, are you he's coming back on the 6th, I guess, since he was coming I, back on the 6th. I can, uh, I can make sure I travel during the day so I could be here for a meeting at night. Okay, so either the 6th or the 7th at night. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, and next up I have Superintendent Warner. You have the proposal for girls uh, junior varsity level volleyball program that we're, ask, we're asking um, for some action this evening. I am, I propose that we do it. I think it's a great idea for more, um, the more activities we have for kids to do and for their student body to, to be involved in is the ultimate, the ultimate, um, I, it just, it's just, it, it gives so much to the school to, to offer another sport, to offer another activity, to offer something else for kids to participate in. Um, not everybody's going to do cross country. Not everybody's going to do golf. Not everybody's going to do football. Um, this is another, uh, not everybody's going to do girls soccer. Um, this is an opportunity for our kids to um, once again excel in a program that we haven't had. It's not a club sport in East Bridgewater, just like uh, girls hockey. You have some kids that do it. <clears throat> We can expand out. I mean, Patrick did a survey. He had 56 girls sign up, uh, give support. They're here this evening to give support. Patrick's done a nice job with the, uh, if I can say anything about uh, the athletic program, that when he does a survey and he goes out and he does his homework and he pushes a sport forward, he really does his due diligence so that we're not left with five kids on a team. With the web hockey, we had kids on the bench. I mean, everybody got to play, but we fielded our, our part of the team along with West Bridgewater. He wouldn't have brought this to me uh, if he didn't think that this was going to move forward and he didn't think he had the girls to go forward. Um, the girls are here this evening. They're smiling. They're hoping that this mm -hmm. goes through. Uh, Mr. Graham, you know, he has, uh, his boys have been here. He's part of the program. He understands the culture. He understands the climate of the athletic program here. He wants to help. I think it's, it's nice to see the support coming from that side as well, coming from um, someone that's in the gridiron that has so much capacity with the boys coming over to the Boosters Club that can really support this and understands the raising of funds for this. Um, John and I spoke about it earlier today. You know, we, we, we've done some good shifting this year with um, our bus, our transportation and things like that. So there is some funds available. I think that we need to support our kids. They came forward. They want to do something. They want to be part of a, a varsity program. It starts out as junior varsity. They have to work forward into the program. But I, I give my, my full endorsement for the program. We have one question and one statement. And one question is, um, <clears throat> do we think that only 30 uniforms is enough, or do we think we need more? Because, I mean, it seems like a small number, but I don't know how many t people are on, a, are on a volleyball team. I put that on a high number, actually. You gotta sit down and talk into the mic. Put that on a high number, <laughs> obviously, just for budget reasons. And uh, that's, that number is actually for two teams. So it would be a varsity and a JV team. Um, so 30 is plenty. Um, we don't have to go out and get varsity uniforms right away. Uh, we're just trying to get the program established right now. And the, the dollar amount for the uniform seems pretty small. So we have uh, one year left uh, on a vendor contract that we get 40% off uniforms. So we've been doing that for the last three years, uh, four years. Well, so my one statement, does anybody have any questions? I have two questions, real quick. Um, so one is, are there any Title IX implications where we're only adding it as a girls' sport? It actually helped us out that we got a JV boys' tennis team this year. Okay. So we had a boys come out and do uh, JV tennis. Yeah, we established a boys' tennis team, so now that we could have a girls' hockey. Um, sorry, girls' volleyball. 
Okay. So we're, we're right in compliance. Cool. The other question I had was, are we able, given it so quickly, are we able to declare a varsity sport like this fall? I didn't realize. No. Through, it's suggested through uh, the state level that you start out as club or JV, much like we do with girls hockey. And then you kind of program develop from there. Uh, like, I'll take my girls hockey coach for an example. Her and I sat down, evaluated the season. She feels much stronger about going to another GV schedule for one more year and then flipping over to varsity. So there's no real timeline. It's just kind of where the program takes so on. So it wouldn't be varsity for the fall, it would be a club? Correct. Club. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, I do. Um, <clears throat> I love the idea. My only concern is that it, wonderful to start it but we then have to support it forever and ever so to speak uh, and so my only concern is the budget implications um, it's it's not the the verbiage wouldn't say contingent on booster support but you know we can't always count on that it's nice to have it but I guess my question would be for John and Liz to say you know what's the prognosis that you know five years from now ten years from now it's not going to have uh, any kind of impact uh, on negative side on our budget. Well, at least for the, the next five years with our busing uh, contract, um, we're sa uh, I'm estimating that we should be saving about $13,000 a year on our athletic transportation. Our, our waiting fee went from $60 an hour to $45 an hour in our new contract, so that would more than support this program at least for the next five years. So, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the busing in general, student transportation, falls under a separate line item, not directly in our operating uh, Regular budget. transportation falls under a separate line item. Right. Athletic. athletic field trips fall under the operating budget and the athletic revolving account. So the, I know, I know we presented that the New contract would save us somewhere, I think, like fifteen thousand dollars a year, or thereabouts. On regular transportation. On regular transportation. transportation. It's also going to save us twelve to thirteen thousand on, on athletic athletics. transportation. Yes. Okay. So uh, we not only did we sit down with Lucini on the regular transportation, we also sat with Lucini on the athletic and field trips and said we can't keep, you know, this waiting time and this affordability time. I mean, we sending three buses out for football, you know, for the day. That's, that's a big expense. Yep. So, and he's worked with us, and Lucini's been good to us. I mean, he, he continues to work, and John continues to work the numbers, and I think we're, I think we're good for five years. R reminder that uh, the kids do participate. They do pay to play mm -hmm. still, which I, I, I certainly don't like because we're a public school. I'd like to pay for, mm -hmm. I would love kids to, to, to be able to play for free, but would they still, if the, ki you know, the kids are going to still have to pay the athletic fee, Right. to pay so I mean there will be more funds in the athletic budget so we're I, for me it's a win-win so what's and the impact after the athletic fee? <coughs> I mean if, if well if you have 30 kids and it's $250 per student okay I didn't know what the fee was yeah 250 we're, so, right uh, yeah right now we're, we're pretty much we've gone under the assumption that all all these kids are playing another sport already right. so there wouldn't be any additional revenue we'll that's it down be great. A very conservative <laughs> way to look at it, yeah. but there are there are you some too. kids that aren't, are not playing another sport who would be paying. So it's not 30 kids okay. at 300. So it's not brand new athletes. That right. are it's it's, it's, that it's going to be brand new fall athletes, though. So we had all right. our fall signups. Yep. Uh, field hockey had a record number at 60. Uh, girls soccer didn't lose any. They're at 50 something. Um, girls cross country is still 20 plus high. We're coming off a South Shore League championship, first time ever. And then we had 60 girls sign up for volleyball. So we haven't lost any females in any sport yet. We're just gaining them and for the fall. That's huge. And just for the folks maybe at home, back a number of years ago, in the budget, there was no line item for sports funding. There was obviously student participation, and then the rest was just sort of fit in there somewhere. We now have a line item for, for athletics to fund sporting uh, uh, the sports teams in addition to the student participation as well, too. So all of that's incorporated into our budget yes, uh, yes. as we now speak. And we think adding this, given the savings on busing and whatever, we should be neutral as far as 
not going to have any impact on the budget we just got approved. I don't believe so. Okay. So I'm all in favor of the girls' volleyball team for five years. Talk to me in six years. <laughs> One question for Mr. Leonard. Um, so for the first year, it would be JV, and then the following year should be able to go up to varsity? Again, I would evaluate that with the coach and the program itself to see where we're at and the competition that we're playing. If we feel it needs uh, more development, we would stay at the JV level, much like we're doing at girls' hockey right now. So right. it just be a yearly evaluation until we get to the varsity level. Anybody else have any more questions? The only thing I can say is that if we have something for kids to do after school, it means they're involved and it means they're engaged. I think it's great. And if we can offer something else to girls, I think it's a win-win for us. I apologize, I did say 250, it's 350. Um, we probably won't lower that until Dr. Williams' sons graduate <laughs> and then we'll lower it. But other than that, it's at 350 right now. <laughs> I, think gonna, I, I think that's going to come back to you. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, so, get all three playing this so, year. So, I mean, you know, we're talking about the budget, and even, so you're saying it's mostly not new athletes. You're saying it may be. So let's split yep. the middle. Say it's 20 new athletes. That's mm -hmm. seven thousand dollars a year in fees. Mm -hmm. That's taking care of the bulk of this. So right. we're not even talking about a. Mm -hmm. But we're also talking about a sport that doesn't have a lot of equipment. Right. Well, it's a pretty cheap sport to fund. Right. You know, it's not. It's not, You don't have pads and helmets and right. and chin guards and uh, mouth guards and. You know, it's, it's. I move that we approve the addition of the girls' volleyball program. Second. Second by Tim. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We Thank now you. have girls' volleyball. Good job. Congratulations, Congratulations, girls. Thank you. Lucas Prague. There you go. I'm going to bring up Brenda Lee next. Brenda Lee is from the class of 1989. Yes. 30 years. Yes, we're celebrating our 30 year reunion. And I appreciate you having me here at the last minute and all the help I got to get to this point. Um, the plan we were thinking about, we've had five classmates pass away. So we were thinking of doing a memorial tree for them. Um, something, you know, along, I call the DBW, I've been in touch with them. and. Obviously something that would be suitable to our area and we thought that the high school would be a good location for it. So I did call the DPW, talk to John Haynes and he said there are a few locations here where I guess trees have been lost and opportunities to plant one uh, so it wouldn't be a problem. I would have to identify a spot and identify a tree and then just coordinate with him for the planting. Our reunion is August 3rd. And we would like to have the tree with us at our reunion, and then we need to put it in the ground immediately. So it would be August 5th, August 6th. And we're just looking to have an okay to put it here, know who I'd have to contact to get other approvals. I'm not sure if signage would have to be approved ahead of time if we want to put a plaque on. Um, that's something that we can wait on until after, but if we could just take care of the tree and get it in the ground, it'd be great. We have benches at other schools that have plaques on them uh -huh. as long as you're asking the school committee for their um, for their support of this mm -hmm. I think we're gonna be okay but this is it's up to yeah, I would totally support it my only question and I think you just started to answer was that there should be some recognition on the tree so people yes. just don't walk by it in years from now and say oh, it's a nice tree but oh it's nice definitely to have the say, there. class of 89 <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's hard we, we actually I'd like to would like to have something that would eventually just commemorate all of us um, so something you know not everybody's individual name but a general um, sentiment that would live on as as we go <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's the plan. We just, we like the idea and we think this is the appropriate location for it in town. Right. So <clears throat> how do we want to do this, everyone? Do we want to vote every, all of it, the plaque or the, um, the tree? I, mean, I, I, I would like to just say, allow them to have a, a tree with a plaque. We, we have them, we have one at Mitchell School. The plaque is, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be audacious. It's going to be a plaque underneath. No, we have, yeah. Oh, that's right, for Tori, yep. And it's, it's appropriate. Yeah. And I think that the class of 89 just coming forward just to be able to, to support each other in the loss of their classmates is an honorable um, 
nice way of remembering people. And, you know, there's uh, Dr. Williams, myself, and John are here. You know, Dr. Williams is our coordinator of, of colors and aesthetics around as she's picking the colors for the new uh, Mitchell um, cafeteria right now. She'd be a good person to go outside and take a look to where the tree would be. Okay. <laughs> Or John, but I think there's 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 some great things out there. Yeah, I've uh, and there's some areas. There are there are certainly areas that could uh, be a nice place yes. for the tree, so that people could see it. Yeah, and know that you support uh, each other and and honor and remember those that were lost. Yes, I would. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I, uh, just trying to again think ahead. <clears throat> After the five years and girls' volleyball team's all done and other people in place, um, you know, just trying to think ahead of what other issues might come up. I, I don't know if this has come up in the past where other classes want to dedicate something. Uh, I, I don't know whether it helps us to be in the minutes to say, you know, it, it's a tree, it's part of our environment, there's no adverse effect on the building, on the traffic, on any of those things. So. It, I can't imagine what else people would come forward to in years ahead to say, you know, I don't know, we want to put something in the road, or whatever, but I don't think so. But we should just say, I think based on what it is, we're assuming that it's going to only go in a place where CPW says it should go. Mm -hmm. uh, and like you said, the, the, I would imagine that um, Ms. Legault has final say on what the, assuming the verbiage on the sign is acceptable, but yeah. somebody on uh, in the administrative office should accept it mm -hmm. uh, and with all that in place Brenda's already spoken to John Haynes but we we spoke to John Haynes coming into the spring because we were losing trees mm -hmm. if you can see if you're driving in and driving out we've lost a few trees um, inside the barriers um, and he suggested that we go with a different type of tree I'm sure that he's told you that you can't yes. put this type of tree in there because right. the root system will not grow in there mm -hmm. so I'm sure that he's already offered you with probably some examples and recommendations yeah. of what you should so I, I have no problems with that I would is everybody else I moved to a lot of the class That's what, <laughs> That's what I was tree say. plaque on school grounds I have um, I move that we accept a generous donation of a tree remembering classmates of the 2019 who have passed away along with a plaque uh, so, <laughs> 1989. Uh, seconded by Tim. We move by me. Second by Tim. I just all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. I'll be in touch. Yeah, thank just you. just come up to the office or send uh, Barbara. Yeah, as I get more us. details, sure. I'll, I'll have something written up. Good luck. Right, well, thank I'm you. Glad that, I'm glad at least one of the trees will be replaced out there. Maybe it will start a go. trend with all the. Yes. Trees. That would be awesome. Thank you. Okay. One last uh, note is that the EB Multimedia Club in the, uh, went to um, MIT on Monday. They had an awesome time. Uh, they went to the social media lab. They had an extensive tour of MIT. They went to the video labs. They went to the Hack Museum. Um, Russ brought the kids to the uh, MIT, they had lunch there. Um, he was just talking to us uh, before he left. He said it was just such a great experience for the kids to go up and see uh, Multimedia Lab because it's re just a reminder that we have kids in all areas, not just sports, not just band, not just the arts. We have kids that are in technology and the multimedia going out to do, uh, you know, want to be a broadcaster or work behind the scenes. It's really nice to have um, EB Cam to take the kids, to go on a field trip, to go up to MIT, walk around, see a beautiful campus, and to be involved and to see their equipment compared to ours. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad that the kids had the opportunity. I want to thank uh, EB Cam Russ um, for taking them uh, up to MIT and having a nice field trip. Great. So my next and final this evening is I am very proud um, to introduce this evening the new junior senior high school principal at the at East Bridgewater Public School District, Jeffrey Silva. He comes to us from Bridgewater Rainham as the assistant principal for the last three years. He taught 22 years in the history department at Bridgewater Rainham. He has his daughter Abigail's birthday today, who turned 18. She just graduated from Dartmouth High School this year. She will be attending Bridgewater State University in the fall. Zachary is 15 years old, entering his sophomore year at Dartmouth High School.
Catherine is eight, and she's entering fourth grade at Potter Elementary in Dartmouth. He tells me his children and their activities and their successes are his personal highlights. They are incredibly active in a variety of activities, and one of his best moments occurred a few weeks ago as he watched his daughter graduate from high school. He says he's never felt so much pride as he's had watching her at that moment. He has been, he's been privileged to be a part of several state championships in his playing and coaching career in baseball. His final high school game as a player was winning a state championship. He also had an opportunity to win a state championship as an assistant coach for New Bedford High School in 1998 at Fenway Park. And as a head coach, he won his league championship five times out of 12 seasons and made the state tournament 11 out of 12 years. So he certainly understands high school athletics, the high school demeanor, um, and what needs to, and the pride that comes along with both teaching and athletics. He graduated from New Bedford High School in 1993. He graduated with a bachelor's degree in 1997 from the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth. He went to Fitchburg State in 2003. And he received his administration, administrator license from DESE in 2013. He's been in education for 22 years. I want to congratulate Jeff. We had a uh, successful uh, contractual negotiations today. It took us all of about five minutes um, after we spoke the other day with Dr. Williams and myself for about an hour. He came back. Uh, we spoke the following day. I did speak to Superintendent Swenson. I spoke to Angela Watson, the principal of Bridgewater Rainham. They cannot say enough about his character, his morals, his integrity, and his ethical responsibility to students and his staff. I think he's the right choice for us. I don't think it. I know it. He's a He's going to change the culture. He'll change the climate. He wants to get to know us first, and then we'll go from there. So, Jeff, we're very excited to have you. I'd like you to come up and just introduce yourself and have a seat. Um, this is Jeffrey Silva. Sylvia. Uh, did you want to do this? <laughs> he told me I didn't spell his name right on his contract today. No, she was telling me. Um, Jeff. Well, Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to East Bridgewater. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for the opportunity. I'm very excited to start. Um, really looking forward to it. Uh, like the like, uh, uh, superintendent said, I, I just, it's, it's, my kids are my pride. And, and when I say my kids, uh, school, you know, where I've been for the past 22 years, my entire professional career, Bridgewater Rainham Regional High School, uh, those, that's my extended family. And I'm really looking forward to having that same mindset here at EB. So thank you very much for the opportunity. It is excellent to meet you, and I, I'm really looking forward to starting. And as Tom Kenny would say, it's great to be a Viking. Great to be a Viking. And actually, thank you very much for, on a side note, thank you very much for accepting the girls' volleyball. I will be your biggest fan. Uh, so I, I am a size large, and I will wear all that pride. So uh, Mr. Leonard. I, will, I will definitely, I'm really looking forward to it. So. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate your time, your effort, and uh, um, again, I'm looking forward to starting. And, and uh, you know, I'm in the transition phase right now, and it's there's a lot of sleepless nights right now, but uh, you know, it, it'll come with with time, and, and I'm gonna really, you know, get to know the lay of the land and, and, and the people, and, and especially the students that, that make up this fine community. So, looking forward to it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Monday morning. Yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> what about tomorrow? <laughs> so he's going, he says he's going back over to BR. He's got to clean up a few things. Derek told me that you got to stay till tomorrow. Tomorrow, you got to sign. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, are you all set with your superintendent's tour now, superintendent? Um, no. I have one more. So I, I speak a lot about um, mm. Deb Vaughn and our food program, our lunch program. When you have a director that puts his, uh, the amount of time that she does into following up 
calling Desi, doing the right things, checking over and over again on prices and is she doing the right thing um, on serving and does she have enough people on the line and, and are the kids eating healthy and are they getting enough food and you know sometimes they tell us these are the portions and she says no we're going to add a little bit more because we've got 18 year old boys or you know 10 year old boys that need to eat. She's done really really well. Um, and she's done so well that um, the amount of money that she brings in at, for the district has allowed us to keep, again, once again, for this will be the fifth year in a row, our prices the same. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for our students and our parents. We, are, we hover 18% free and reduced lunch, so we don't have a lot of people who need free and reduced lunch, but we have enough. And there's probably more than 18%, and some people feel that they may not need or they don't want anybody to know that they get free and reduced. So I, 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 I say it one more time. Please fill the paperwork out when it comes home with your kids from uh, Central School, Mitchell School, and the high school. If you need some help, you're going to get the help. And no one's going to know you to get the help. It, it, nothing comes up. But I just want to thank Deb Vaughn and all of her, um, all of the people that work in our cafeterias. They do a tremendous job. They are so nice, and they try different things, and they ask the kids what they want to eat. And that's a big deal. Um, not every kid wants to have anything else but peanut butter and jelly. Some kids don't want to have anything else but tuna fish because that's what they like at home and that's what their moms make them every day and they really experiment with different things at all of the schools. So our lunch prices are going to stay the same at Central School at $2.75, at the Gordon Mitchell $2.85, the Junior Senior High School at $3, reduced lunch is, is 40 cents at all schools um, and milk is 65 cents and then a la carte prices are ranging from a dollar to a dollar fifty She can't put a price on all of that because she does go out um, for bid on some of those with is it Thurston Foods John? Is it Thurston? One is one of them, but she does go out and look for better prices and she goes out for bids um, And a dollar fifty all schools all, all schools will serve breakfast this year again, and we push it if you drop your kids off early and they go to little, uh, they go to before and after care, they get breakfast. They should have breakfast with us. We serve a full breakfast. I want more students at the junior senior high school to eat breakfast because we know older students tend not to just leave the house and jump on the bus and without breakfast. So, um, a positive or zero balance in its nonprofit school first ser service account as of December 31st, 218 is exempt from PLE pricing requirements. Found it. This is just the. The, um, the law and the requirement from DESE that you're reading. But what it's saying is, is that we're doing a good job and we're, we're getting kids to eat our lunches. Less and less are bringing, so they're buying lunches, which again pushes up uh, over the limit. So they see that we are selling more lunches, which is good for us and the kids are eating well. So I just wanna thank uh, Deb Vaughn and her crew on um, our food program here at EB. It's, it's, a it's, it's a challenge, and she does very, very well. And she's also uh, using some of um, what she can for us. She bought tables, um, high top tables that Dr. Williams has helped um, uh, pick out the colors and the Viking head, I think, that's on the table. They're high tops for the junior, senior high school, so kids can stand there and eat. Um, it's pretty cool looking, and then we'll have some out by the, um, uh, for athletic games on the inside in that foyer so and then if we do and then during the Viking block if we open up the concession stand during the year kids will be able to come down and have a snack um, so that's those are good things um, and I think you've, you've picked the Viking and the, the colors of the tables yep. and yep so we have rectangular high tops that will go down the center of the cafeteria and then we'll have high top circular tables that'll go the perimeter of the cafeteria as well as, like the superintendent said, we'll have round high tops in the foyer that have the Viking logo in the center. Nice. So it's you know, a little bit more we're catching up to West Bridgewater. <laughs> and so that finally, Listen, finally. I just, I just want to say having a, a child at the Mitchell and a child at the Central, we, we play this little Sunday night game every week <laughs> our kids of going through the weekly menu and bringing or buying and, you know, making lunches at 6 in the morning is nobody wants to do that. 
And I've watched over the last four years, my kids go from about 80% bringing to about 80% buying. And my kids are very picky eaters. And, um, <laughs> It's a tribute to the hard work of the staff there. They love lunch at the schools. And she does a lot of surveying. Like she brings, and she does a lot of, a lot of taste testing. Yeah. They did, um, they do a lot with avocados. Mm -hmm. <laughs> avocados. <laughs> we, had, we had shipments of avocados orange at chicken. one time. Oh, and orange chicken was a big seller this year. The kids loved it. We had it, uh, we had a lighthouse meeting with um, all the superintendents in the lighthouse in the South Shore on last Wednesday and she had orange chicken, and I can tell you, the superintendents loved it. So um, that was great. So, but she does a nice job, and so do the ladies that work with her, and they work hard. Those cafeterias are, are hot, and they're busy. I mean, those kids come through. They want to eat, and they're ready to go. Um, but she's also, she bought tables for junior, senior high school, and she's painting the Mitchell School, the Mitchell school cafeteria and um, the, the kitchen. So they're cleaning it, um, she's steam cleaning it and power washing it, um, and then they will paint it. And she's big into cleanliness, which we all are. It is a good thing, so. But I just wanted to say kudos to her, so. Thank you. That's it. Okay, um, next up we have the superintendent's uh, comp compiled evaluation, the compilation of all the individual evaluations. So I'm just gonna run through it quickly. This is for the FY19 year. I didn't give you one. Uh, we have <laughs> <laughs> the front page is the um, end of cycle summit evaluation report. So uh, we have professional practice goal met, superintendent learning goal met, district improvement goal met. Standard one, instructional leadership was proficient. Uh, standard two, management and operations proficient. Standard three, family and community engagement proficient and professional culture exemplary. We have End of, uh, let's see, rate overall summer for the overall summer of support performance is proficient. Rate on uh, impact on student learning was moderate. And some comments, um, excellent and effective leader, confident in her abilities, need for specific goals, uh, effective and outstanding leadership, professional development academy, academy is exemplary, improved budget, improved communication and collaboration with town. Um, the next page is professional practice. We have uh, one, what, let's see, these are the goals. So during the 2018-19 school year, Superintendent Lego will use the narrative data received uh, from new curriculum and map assessment. Uh, we have met student learning, improved student writing proficient, proficiency was met. District improvement, organized budget building process that is inclusive of all stakeholders, um, that was met. Focus on culture and climate of school district by evaluating district communication protocols uh, that was met. And uh, the last one, number five, uh, continue to offer and support professional development opportunities that was met. And then we have the next page, superintendent's performance rating for standard one instructional leadership. Uh, so when we do this, just for, I know you all know now, but and for people out in TV land or for everyone, for the community. <laughs> Well, for the community, uh, we have a number of uh, indicators and we select only a few from the list because there's so many to choose from. So we have one, um, we have, we chose one A, which is curriculum, and one B, which is instruction, and those we found to be proficient. We have uh, some of the comments, and the overall was proficient, and some of the comments are opportunity to improve overall student achievement, Science and technology needs focus, uh, need focus on junior, senior high school actively. Well, that would be great. Now we have a new high school principal, so that, that's gonna work out well. Um, actively working on curriculum and instruction strategies and conducting regular and continuing, conducting regular, oh, and continuing uh, school visits with assistant to superintendent. And then we have 2A environment that was found to be proficient. 2E fiscal systems was found to be exemplary for an overall of proficient. We have need more resources and supportive social and emotional needs of students, lack of adjustment counselors, Liz is providing clear direction and standards, fiscal standards and management are excellent, meets frequently with uh, business administrator and continues to work on and support the strategic plan well within our budget, worked well with town and other uh, department heads. 
Superintendent's performance rating for standard three, family and community engagement. We selected three C, which was communication. We found to be proficient, overall proficient. She has had an effective communication with the community, briefs to school committee as needed, works with administrators to continue to improve communication, and um, keeps community informed with regard to junior, senior, high school principal and selection. Oh, <laughs> that's, like a, that's an old item. It's still uh, a check, though. We, ha we, got we it have <laughs> um, standard four professional culture. That's um, we picked. We selected four A commitment to high standards, and that was found to be exemplary. And the overall uh, rating was exemplary. Fosters shared commitment to high standards of serving, teaching, and learning. High expectations for all. Working on a plan for universal design and full inclusion. Leadership, direction, and values are exemplary. And that is it. Thank you, Superintendent Legault, for doing a great yeah. job. I think, I think for people at home to know that we don't just pick this out of the air, we no. follow this uh, recommended uh, DESI uh, format. And as Liz, I mean, as Ellen said, there's a whole bunch of stuff on here. We pick what we think is relevant. We think we have to pick for next year as well now, we too. Yeah, right? Yeah, we'll be setting up a meeting with Liz. Um, um, I have it ready. Probably and right before the school committee meeting in August. Yeah. And, um, now being on the committee for a number of years, um, my um, respect for the complexity of the job that you do has just grown year after year. It is amazing. All of us can sit at a distance and have an opinion one way or the other, but when you really dig into it and find out just how complex it is to run an entire district, we might be the biggest, we might be the smallest, doesn't matter. Every, everything matters. and. Um, there's just so many components, um, and, and I just think, thank goodness there's this format. Thank goodness we work with Liz. She supplies us with a lot of information. It isn't just people's opinions. Um, there's data that backs it up. Um, and then I think, at least I know I try, I think we all try to add comments uh, I think there's a few notes in there we think we need to get better at, and I think you recognize that as well too. And, to your, your, to your credit, you're always asking us, you know, what do you need me to do? You just let me know and I'll do it. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, every time you've said that and we've asked you something you've produced. So um, I just think it's, uh, you hold such an important role in the town, certainly for the district. Um, and uh, we appreciate the job that you do. Um, and there's always room for improvement. All of us have it. It's a matter of uh, identifying it and working together to get there. But it doesn't mean that we don't appreciate where we are and how we've gotten there. And uh, there's so many tremendous accomplishments. Sometimes they get kind of, they fade off pretty quickly. But um, I know for one, seeing the progression through these last few years, it's pretty impressive and pretty not noticeable. Uh, and so um, I just wanted to add those couple of things because I, the, the complexity is, is, is really pretty, pretty impressive, all the different components, like I said. So, Thank and uh, we're, I'm, I'm glad, I think we're all glad that you're here, Every Liz. Every single time I come in the office, Liz is always on the go, always busy, always working hard. Same thing with the Assistant Superintendent, Gina Williams, and also uh, John Shea. All three of them. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> John. <laughs> I never see them doing, I never see them doing nothing. So, and I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I kidding. Mean, the three this, musketeers. I think you work well together. You know, I, putting together a team is probably the most difficult thing that a, um, a leader can do because you need to find people that are smarter than you. You need to find people that want to work harder than you. You want, you want people that want to be better than you. So you need to be smarter than them to get better than them and you got to run faster than John which is not that hard <laughs> anymore wow. um, but we, we race all the time I just want everybody to know um, my principals push me my assistant principals push me um, John Phelan has just been a tremendous boost for our special education department. He was um, the last piece to this puzzle of a, of a good central administration 
Deb Vaughn. Um, she's tough. <laughs> she's tough on John and tough on me. Um, John is terrific. You, you know, I trust him. I, he's confident in his numbers, and I'm confident in him. And I've said this before, but you cannot lead a district without a partner, and Dr. Williams has been truly a partner since I began here. And she pushes me to be better. She makes me think a little bit harder each day. She makes me make sure that I think about everything, that when I make a decision, it's not just based on two things, it's based on all things. So they make me better, and uh, especially the staff inside the office, Joanne Benner, um, Melanie Lanny, and of course, I couldn't move uh, without Barbara Polisi. So, you know, really, we're just as good as, you know, the weakest man on the, or the weakest girl on the uh, chain, and that would probably be me with my staff, and um, they're terrific. So thank you for the, this has been great. Thank you. Nice. We look forward to another, how many years you have left on your contract? We look forward to working with you. <laughs> 20. I hope a lot. Another 20. <laughs> I just gave Dr. Williams more than me. <laughs> Um, and next up we have uh, the first reading of the proposed change to the school committee policy EFD meal charge policy and we have that enclosed uh, and so okay so just Deb Vaughn sent that up to you yeah okay. um, so we have um, the part that needed to change was in yellow it says any remaining funds for a particular student whether positive or negative will be carried over to the next school year and that needed to change because of um, requirements in law so the change has, um, it's been changed to read, any remaining positive funds for a particular student will be carried over to the next school year. Unpaid meal charges are carried over at the end of the school year beyond June 30th as a delinquent debt and collection efforts will continue to, into the new school year. So um, that was changed out of necessity, out of requirement. So that's the first reading. And then um, next up we have um, Mr. John Shea, School Business Administrator, he's going to discuss with us uh, FY19 operating budget, non-salary expense, mm -hmm. soft rate report, and revolving account summary. Thank you. I'm passing around the... Sorry I didn't get this out last week, but I was knocked out with Lyme disease. I'm back. <laughs> Welcome back. John, did you say Lyme disease? Oh, That's no. what he said. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. You recover in Aruba? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I got a call from Vegas. <laughs> Twin River called us. <laughs> so this report is an update as of uh, June 20th. There's 10 days left in the year. So this is where we get uh, nervous and sweaty and... Uh, just to make sure we, uh, we meet budget at year end. The non-salary budget, uh, non-salary right now, uh, we have an available balance of $47,075. Last year at this time, we had an available balance of 13274 I know we do have some outstanding bills, uh, legal bills. Uh, I know there's a science... Uh, science supply um, bill um, but I, I think uh, we're as far as non-salary goes uh, we're, we're in good shape as we were last year salary budget uh, we have an available balance of 2.6 uh, to almost 2.7 million dollars yet last year at this time we had an available balance of 2.5 million uh, as, as I have it explained to you guys in the past. Um, I project out the year. I updated every payroll period. I'm estimating um, payroll through the end of the term to be approximately two point six million five fifty two million six hundred and fifty thousand. So I, I think we're really in good shape on the salary side too. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that again we will um, be under budget. Nice. And then will we be asking for those funds to go into the 
and reserve. Well, we, we kind of set a precedent this year that uh, we, we were under budget last year, and I asked, uh, uh, and because we're under budget, those, those funds flow to, free, flow to free cash, and I asked uh, in an article that those funds be transferred to the special ed reserve fund. So I think it was a pretty good precedent. It's a way to, to, to fund this, although $6,000 isn't going to do much. Um, but I think every, every uh, little bit helps, and, and I would, if we come under budget this year, I would uh, propose to do the same thing next year. Does the town have any mechanism short of us being under budget to fund that special ed reserve? We, we can. Uh, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of different ways you can fund it. You can fund it in your operating budget. Um, we could ask for more money out of free cash. Okay. So was there any, when it was created, was there any plan or thought into, like, in the future, we'd like to contribute 50 grand a year or, or anything like that? Or was it just kind of a, we'll see how it goes? When uh, we first started, we just wanted to get it open. Sure. Right. That's how it really was, was. We weren't sure if it was going, if they were, if we were going to be allowed. Mm -hmm. Right. And really, I mean, yeah. when we first started, we weren't sure if they were going to allow us to open it. Gotcha. So. Right. And, and so that's something we could think about. You know, my intent was, that, you know, if we do come under budget, which is a good thing, that I, I think yeah. um, funding that fund, yeah. that reserve fund, would, would be a great idea and yeah. help us in the, in the future yeah. in case we ever need it. Mm -hmm. But again, when we, when we do the budget next year, that's something we can, we can discuss. Questions on that? Nope. Uh, revolving fund balances um, are doing uh, are doing well. Um, circuit Circuit Breaker right now has a uh, a, a balance of seven hundred and sixty three thousand. Um, there's still a uh, a payment due, but at the end of the year, that uh, fund balance can only um, the total of that account can only be five hundred thousand dollars. So we are working with special ed to prepay tuitions next year in order to get that down to five hundred thousand because we we can't carry over more than five hundred thousand next year. Five hundred one thousand, I believe. Unbelievable. School choice uh, is doing well. Uh, we should receive a couple more payments uh, in school choice. So probably another forty-five thousand there. Uh, no plans to spend any of that uh, over the next ten days. Uh, athletic fund a little lower uh, than last year. Uh, part of that is you know we spent a lot of money on uh, uniforms this year. We do uh, pretty much spent everything out of the athletic fund that we will be spending. Uh, we are expecting a payment from West Bridgewater for this year of hockey. Uh, to the tune of about seventy-seven hundred dollars, I believe. So that we'll, we should see an increase there. As far as the other other funds, um, preschool doing well. Sped tuition didn't revolving is uh, lower than last year, but uh, as I, th I think I explained a couple times, we, we've had less uh, kids coming in from other towns, um, so that would. Uh, reduce that but we uh, hopefully in our, in our budget we've included a couple more kids coming in um, which is uh, Jay Fallon from our special yeah. ed department yeah. feels that that will happen so um, that should turn that around a little bit school bu building rental is doing great uh, you know that a lot of that is uh, uh, Joanne and uh, Candace Lasley they, they do a great job with that um, we do, I, you know, I probably will be bringing some uh, ideas uh, and, and needs, especially in the auditoriums uh, at the middle school and uh, the high school uh, to get your approval to possibly spend, spend some of that money um, in the lecture hall. Some work that needs to be done in the lecture hall. Busing fees holding steady, before and after school care holding steady. Uh, we're, we're still looking at uh, the possibility of renovating the old shop area at the middle school for before and after care, and using these funds to do so. And Little Vikings, Little Vikings is high right now, but that's because 
We haven't paid anyone. We have the tuition, <laughs> but we haven't paid anyone out yet. Um, for those people who are at home, you don't get to see this, uh, what's in front of us. But just to give you an idea that back in 2014, many of these balances were negative. Uh, so obviously, um, good indication of just how well the district was running, particularly in credit to Liz and, and certainly to John that these things are running so well um, that it's a source of strength, not a so, source of uh, weakness. So thank you. It, it, you can see it at the far right column in 2014, right. a lot of those accounts were negative balances. Yep. Five out of nine. It, it, you know, it's, I, I can tell you, having had, a, having had a child in before and after care in 2014 and hearing from parents now about it, just the process for collecting payments, the, you know, the, the just it's so much more well organized now than it was. And it's, it shows why here. I mean, it was kind of a mess five or six years ago when <laughs> My kids were in it, so. Yeah, we, we've uh, done a lot of improvements. Uh, Erica, uh, Christy in, in our office has been setting, uh, doing as much as she can, setting up all these uh, extracurricular uh, programs on QuickBooks. So it makes life so much easier. Right. Than... Right, right here. Any, uh, any questions on that? No. Great job. So uh, I, I did add, add something new. Um, I, I guess it's, it's a little disheartening to, to hear a lot of the scuttlebutt out there about how we're not focusing on spending money on the kids. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. And maybe that's partly my fault because I don't, maybe I'm not sharing as much as I could be or in a format that I, I should be to you guys to help you explain this. Um, but I, I want, just for the junior, senior high school, I wanted to show you the, the 2018 budget, 2019 budget, and 2020 budget. And these are the different um, line items in, in the high school uh, category for supplies, textbooks, and you, you can see, just looking at the grand total, we had a budget of $2,018, $25,400 total. In 2020, we have a budget of $51,150. we have increased the budget in two years 100%. And you can argue maybe that's not enough, but I, I don't think you can argue the fact that we're not trying to do to do what's what's best and trying to put more money into the into the programs for the kids. So, John, I have a question. Looking at this breakout of all the different um, subjects, <clears throat> departments, etc. So, to your point, when you're trying to navigate information and there's information out there saying you know the money's not being spent on textbooks. Um, or there's not enough safety equipment in the labs for labs. What is the process? Does the teacher need to put in a request? And how is that request handled? So, so to hear that, okay, we have a science program. And I'm just using an example. Mm -hmm. We have a science program. And we don't have enough safety equipment. So we can't do the appropriate labs or what have you. If we, if we don't have that equipment, how would we get it? Because there's clearly money being spent. So is a request not being made? Well, I, I can tell you two years ago with, with science, I mean, there was a lot of work done. Uh, Gina did a lot of work with science, dealing with the science department. They spent about $150,000 on science. It's outside of this, because th this is just the normal operating mm -hmm. budget. But there was about $150,000 spent on science. It, it, just like anything, if, if there's a need, mm -hmm. We'll they, need to, they need to communicate. And that's what I'm asking. So when you hear that, is it because the need isn't being put forth? So, so there's a process if a teacher says, oh, I need some more lit books. Or I the first thing I do is if, if a teacher comes to me, <laughs> go ahead. I will say, put it in writing to the principal, copy Mrs. Williams, Dr. Williams, and copy me. <laughs> Gina. So I can stay on top of it. Two years ago, the art department came to me. The art department came to me. In their email, they said, you're not spending money on art supplies. We're buying it ourselves. So I said, well, you know, it's the first time I'm hearing that. 
put together, put together a summary, talk to the principal, talk to Mrs. Williams, and, and then we'll, we'll work on it. And you, and you can see the art department went from 3500 in 2018, and now it's up to $6,000. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's really the, the way it's supposed to work. So it's that the teachers are perhaps not putting in the request. So, if I may. Yes, please. Do you mind, John? <laughs> so the principals will talk. Let's just say at the junior senior high school, we do have lead teachers like we do at all the schools. I'm going I'm to focus on the junior senior high school. Principal goes out and meets with the lead teachers. What do you need? After the principal has that need list, mm -hmm. there could be some needs, there could be some wants. What's in the curriculum review cycle? That's on the outside. That's Dr. Williams on the, the curriculum review cycle in science. This year it was so, this year it's social studies and world language. Last year it was wellness, health and wellness. Once the principal has that, they cannot go directly to John and just hand over a piece of paper and say, I want all this. It must be vetted through the assistant superintendent's office. There has to be a protocol. Because we could be, we could be spending, I, you know, I could, uh, someone said to me once, you, you're spending like a drunken sailor. There's got to be a protocol. If Dr. Williams does not know the program, if doesn't, it's not in the program of studies, it's not vetted through Dr. Williams, she doesn't know how many students are there or, or what, what have you, it doesn't get pushed to, to the business office. Okay. So the principal must come up. And then it goes to Dr. Williams. Then Dr. Williams gets it. And she's done it a couple of times this year. I don't want to speak for it, but she's had um, the principal sit with her, and then she pushes it back and says, I don't have enough information. Give me more. Mm -hmm. It goes back. The principal comes back and then advocates once again and says, well, we really need this. I've heard Dr. Williams said, no, you can get out of your 42000 you can get 33000 but I'm not going to spend here because we did last year. What happened to this equipment or what happened here? And then usually we'll come back around right now, which Dr. Williams did today. I received a proposal from some, uh, for science equipment because um, I spoke to science last week on the scheduling and this and that, and I had a nice conversation with junior, senior high school teachers. I sat in a meeting. I, Dr. Williams was actually out um, at uh, the Mitchell School. She came back today, I took it, I gave it, I, I got a, um, I think about twelve dollars or $13,000 worth. I gave it to Dr. Williams. She's now going through it. I think it was, I think there was an email given today. She's approving this, and now it goes to John. But it didn't just get approved by Gina. She, you know, looks through it, talks to the lead teacher, comes back, you know, how, what are we doing? So I, I don't want to speak for you, but. All right, so, I mean, the, the curriculum review cycle is a six-year cycle. Yep. We're only, we just finished year three. So until we've gone through all six years, we haven't gone through this process with every content area. But essentially, it's as we go through a content, so two years ago, science, the main bulk of the money that year is for curriculum resources, whether it's online or hardcover text. That's the bulk of it. But then also, they establish supplies and materials. Of those supplies and materials, anything that's considered a consumable would then be factored into the building-based budget the following year. So that's how John has been able to adjust the building-based budget, knowing what consumables they're going to have to reorder every year. Okay. Um, the, the piece that recently came up, even though science isn't um, on for curriculum review cycle, they're getting the supplies uh, of the 14,000, about 8,000 was supplies, and that's what the budget's being increased to for this year. But then there was about another 6,000 for replacement of hot plates and, and some equipment that we got when we first opened the new school, and now six years later, things need to sure. be replaced. So I think a little bit of it was the staff not knowing where does replacement equipment come into play, knowing that consumables and supplies and materials are the building-based budget, um, the curriculum review cycle is more for the textbooks and the online resources, and science is a little bit different in that aspect, that there's a lot more lab equipment, um, or essentially only lab equipment mm -hmm. in science sure. as opposed to the other areas. So um, we're working those kinks out as we go through each content area so that hopefully by year six, we've established building-based budgets for reoccurring costs and big uh, renewals um, or new adoptions 
are going to be on those re the okay. cycle years. So I just think it's important for parents to know that it's, you know, needs are not being necessarily overlooked. Perhaps there were some, some misunderstandings about the communication process or how to ask for these or, or, or what have you, but it's not as though kids are in classes and they don't have the necessary textbooks or the, necessarily to necess the necessary tools for a lab or something like that. I, I can't say enough about John and Gina, w w what they do, but there's, I don't think there's been a principal who has come up, any of our principals who have come up and advocated for something mid-year after we got out there and they just needed more. Usually it's uh, the elementary school, it's usually central school because there's a consumable that they're going through too quickly. Uh, orange paper in October, red and green, and, <laughs> and we, it's a joy. I mean, we, we, we smile when Kate comes up because we know what she's coming <laughs> to get, but Valentine's Day is red, yep. so, um, and pink. But I don't think there's a principal that a teacher has gone to and said, I really need this. They come up and advocate. Gina, it may take Gina a day to think about it and to say, is this really what we need? And it is, is it in the best interest of the fourth grade to get this? Is this what we want for the fifth grade? Once it's there, I, I don't think I've heard him say no, and I don't think I've heard no, John it's say no. There's been a breakdown of communication yeah. here at the junior senior high school. Well, that's, that's what I'm going to ask. So, so at the lower level, the Mitchell and, and, and the Central. So I specifically had an example in recent years with a teacher, and won't get into specifics here, obviously, but where my wife and I were questioning the book that the class was reading in that it seemed below the level of, of the grades that the kids that were at. And after a couple of minutes of conversation, the teacher candidly admitted that it was the only set of books that they had a full class set of available. And so I guess I would question, in a situation like that, what would be the process at the lower elementary, elementary level? Would the teacher still work through the principal and then go through John? I just, it seemed like there was a breakdown in this case in the kids being able to get something that the teacher wanted to teach. Yeah, so usually, I mean, as the superintendent said, it would start with conversations that the building principal would be having with the teachers okay. um, about what the needs are, um, and then from the then it would go from the principal. Then, if there was you know a need for additional uh, financial support, then so there's, so there's no go between at the lower levels. It's really between teacher and principal. Yes. Okay. And so certainly teachers have the opportunity going into the new school year as well as mid-year mid or really any point in time in the school year. If there's a need, they can present it. And then obviously it would be considered, is it feasible? Is it necessary? So that, that process is understood. And there's a gatekeeper, which is me. Yes. So when the principals don't go to Dr. Williams and I and this happened this year. And John said, and we we understood we were running a program. And both Gina and I saw it on one of the sheets, and we said, "How did this course get in?" It's a great course to have. We're very excited that we're having it. But who who said this was okay? It got to John's desk. Somebody could have just went in and just put it down there, and he just assumed that it was okay. But then John walked over and said, "Hey, we're running this course. If we don't know, we're not. We cannot just say yes, mm -hmm. regardless if it's a three thousand dollar or fifteen thousand um, dollar. But everything must, and, and the gatekeeper has to be one of us mm -hmm. or the three of us. You know, when it comes to the curriculum and instruction, it's got to go through uh, Dr. Williams because she's overseeing that." She knows what they're doing. When, you know, Tim, when you said about the books, um, I know that we've gotten better at our craft up here, and I know the principals have too. I know that now that they're sitting down um, in common planning time, which they never had before, sure. where they sit down and they really hone in on what are the grade level books, and now with universal design, we're looking at different books an array of books sure. for the fourth grade, for the fifth grade, grade. I mean, they're all gonna be different uh, titles, different uh, uh, depths. Um, different learning so I really think that we're getting better at our craft which is allowing the principals to get better at their craft which is allowing teachers to feel more supported by the administration so I know we can always we can always do more for our kids oh, yes. there's always more money we could spend more yep. needs but is there anything urgent that you would say that we would need right now at the 7 to 12 level that we haven't been able to provide like is there is there I mean without getting into specifics a yes or no question is there things still outstanding that we have to say we just can't do it right now even though we feel like the teachers really need it right now from for programming programming yeah 
So there's a few things. Um, one is robotics. Uh, so actually, uh, one of the um, tech education teachers had shared with us a proposal maybe in March uh, that he had written up in 2015. Um, we just saw it for the first time in, in March. Um, you know, we're anxious to have robotics at all levels. Um, however, we have to start somewhere. So uh, because students have had STEAM at the Mitchell School, we'll be starting with robotics here with seventh and eighth grade and then building as those kids age through. Um, and certainly we'll have to build capacity to be able to have more advanced robotics as the students get older. Uh, the other piece- oh, um, we have funded. We do, oh yes, right. so we do have robotics. Um, one of the ways that we were able to do it is by the support of the before and after care program because then they can be used for little Vikings in, in after school and over the summer. So they'll run three sections of robotics this fall. Uh, the other thing is this year we have world languages, um, which in um, social studies and world languages, so that's foreign language. Uh, and there's been lots of discussion. We've even had positions available to hire and could not um, recruit mm -hmm. um, any foreign language teachers at the lower levels, but now there's the opportunity for students to earn by literacy seals before graduation. So we really wanna work hard on getting, um, at a minimum at the seventh and eighth grade level, for students to be able to acquire one um, year of, of solid um, foreign language so that they could then potentially get to a level five by the end of their, their senior year. So those are, a couple. I, I feel really strongly, you know, it's our, it's our duty as a school department. I mean, we don't have to fund the Cadillac, but we fund the Ford Escort at a minimum, you know. Mm -hmm. And if we're presenting a budget to the town that doesn't even include these types of things that are, you know, the Ford Escorts, you know, it, it's our duty. So, you know, we look to next year's budget. These are things I'd well, Right. And I think, th I think things are changing. Mm -hmm. You know, the school department has changed over the last four years since I've been here. Yep. We've passed a budget every year. We're in good standing. Um, we're hiring teachers, um, and we, we really, we're on an upward swing. No doubt. They're gonna be hiring a new town manager. Actually, some, one came to visit me and asked about the schools yesterday. I sat with him for about 40 minutes. Um, Rocco Longo uh, has sort of just steered the ship, and I mean, when we met with him about our budget, he was like, we're all set, you're gonna be fine. I think he's being more transparent. He's showing revenue coming in, revenue going out. I think that, he called me today and asked me for the ClearGov information so that, so that the town could be more transparent. And I think that in the, I think that our time has been the four years coming. I think now that the town is gonna to catch up to the schools and say, okay, now it's our turn to do the transparency and to do these things. Um, we are, as a, as a school, we decided, my team, that the, the piece of the pie is not just going to be all, all salary. It's going to go towards kids and our students. And as you can see, like John said, 100%, you know, even at the school, 25 to 50,000, you know, in a three year period, that's a two year period, that's, that's darn good. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're, we, because we stay focused on what we wanna do, and some people don't see it, but we're focused. We're focused on our kids, and we're focused on supporting our teachers. I think with the change in the town government, with the increase in Chapter 70, we're seeing it. Yep. We're gonna see it. Um, I was told uh, two weeks ago at the South Shore when we were up there, um, I was sitting next to uh, the business administrator from another district, uh, a couple other superintendents. You know, ours looking at an increase of what, about 250,000, John, this year? And about 500 next, they're, they're even saying it could be th up to 350,000 this year, and then next year up to 800,000. Hearing that from the superintendent from Brockton, who's up on Capitol Hill all the time because she's the fighter and, and she is the chapter seven and she is our, our, our avant-garde up there, you know, pushing um, for that new chapter 70 funding. We're gonna see it. And I think the town needs to realize we're part of it. And we were part of the advocacy. You, you went this year, you saw it. I mean, school districts are walking all around trying to get in to see these senators, like don't let us down, and the reps, don't let us down. Um, I think things are changing. And, and we had a, an administration that said 2%. We, even if, and I think it would have been a hard get two years ago, I think it would have been a hard year, a hit a year ago, we stood our ground this year. I think John and I and Gina, um, you know, held the fort here as John and I were running up and down from 
the town in holding the line. I mean, we started at 3.5, 374. Yeah. And and we came down. No oh no, I know, but happy with this. Like, yeah, it's great. I, I just want to make sure we're continuing to push the. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I think that I think that it's going to change, yeah. and I think that you know we do pretty well in East Bridgewater, and people need to realize that they do well in East Bridgewater, and it's okay to do well. It's okay to be okay, and it's okay to have a, a nine hundred thousand dollars, you know, plus every year it's okay that means you're doing well it means your kids are doing well in school and this and that but some of that money's got to come to the schools some of it's got to go to the police some of it's got to go to safety some of the, some, some go to the library because it's a town so i i do i think things are changing i mean john you feel that when we go up there i mean it you you definitely feel that so when you say push i'm gonna push i'm i'm meeting with rocco on tuesday i'm gonna push there on Tuesday so because there's things that we want to see like you said the efficiency um, there is an, another program that I've been pushing John and Patrick they've tried to do it last year for athletics it's called Arbiter it helps pay the um, referees and umpires and it makes it a streamlined process instead of touching my hands John's hands Joanne's hands Patrick's hands it goes right into John just funds it and then people like have, I think, an ATM card or whatever for the umpires and refs, and they just go and they do it. It would streamline the process. I think it would make our hands cleaner when it comes to athletics. Um, and I think John does a good job at trying to put those types of programs in place. I think with the new town administrator and the, new, the way the town is going, I think the arbiter may be in our sights. So I think it's going well. Right. But you're right. Don't stop. Right. <laughs> Don't stop. Can I just ask one question? So the literature books and novels purchased, was that um, from this year or a previous year? Oh, I, well, I, 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 added, I added that because I've heard a lot of talk that we have, we've got kids walking around with tattered books and we're not spending money on, on novels. You, you can see from that we spent almost $8,000 on novels this year. And those five novels there, we bought about 40 of them. Even more on some of that. Wow. So, no. I just want to get this, give you guys the. Thank you, because I think it's important because you do hear, and you can't always speak to it directly if your kid, you know, doesn't have direct experience, and that's why I asked, you know, specifically about science and literature because you do hear these things, mm -hmm. and it's helpful to see this type of information. I was just asking Dr. Williams, was there anything that kids needed to do over the summer that maybe we, that we should just relay one more time on the summer reading? Sure. And Summer reading is on the district website. The theme for the district is responsibility. So at the Mitchell School and at the Junior Senior High School, there is a suggested list. However, they have the option of choosing their own book as long as the character demonstrates um, responsibility within the story. Central School is still one book. Um, <laughs> Pigsty, I think, is the book. Um, and they also have a scavenger hunt for the, the lower level. I love that. And the librarian at the, at the um, East Bridgewater Public Library, she's very helpful, and she has the list of the books. Yep. They're all and gone. She has recommendations. Well, they we are? already went, yeah. we went like, right we went to today. school. And, and, um, uh -oh. So she has other recommendations that she can help. John, could you buy some more books? <laughs> so, quick, quick, just some quick feedback. I was wondering, um, so when we do these summer reading um, projects, I know some other schools um, do a, a, an option to purchase the book. And um, it, there's, there's a thing they work on, I don't know the specifics, but they're working with Amazon and it benefits the school district a little bit financially. Like there's, is there, yeah, so, a, we it, so that? we've done that in the past with both central school <coughs> and Central school when it's been one book. Mm -hmm. It makes it a little bit more difficult when sure. we have a, a list of titles to choose from. Uh, in years past, actually, it's been the PTOs who have actually um, purchased the books uh, for the students uh, to have. I don't know as far as going forward whether an option for us to bulk buy. Um, that sometimes when you go on to the um, sales network for the library, you can have, put books on hold so they'll send them from another library and then right. send them over to ours. Yeah, yeah, there's now apps out there mm -hmm. where you can even download the books um, at no cost. And I, I know one of the purchasing groups I belong to, um, 
will share the discount with families too. Cool. So um, that's something we can talk about. Mm -hmm. Add that onto the site. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> at this time, I would take a motion to approve the school committee meeting minutes from June 6, 2019. So moved. Second. Moved by Gordon, second by Tim. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Can I move on the executive session? Yes. Mm -hmm. Aye. Um, at this time, I would take, thank you. At this time, I would take a motion to approve the uh, school committee meeting superintendent evaluation workshop from May 1st, 2019. So only those of us who were there could. Yes. It's just right. me that wasn't there. Okay. No, I did. I want to make sure I understood. So. Motion okay. So I move. Gordon, motion by Gordon, second. Second. By Rob. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And then I would um, take a motion to approve counts payable warrant 52V dated June 19, 2019. So moved. moved second. By Trista, second by Tim. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And I would take a motion to approve payroll warrant 51PS dated June 12, 2019. So moved. Moved by Gordon. Second. Second by Trista. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And um, so at this time, I have. Um, because so we, we talked about EFD meal charge policy that was the first reading uh, earlier on the agenda um, so I would take a motion because it's because it's uh, required that we have to do this and it also has to get into the it needs to be into the student handbook for this coming school year and they do it over the summer so I would take a motion to waive which we can do we can waive the three reading process and vote on the first reading of the recommended change to the school committee policy EF as in Frank D meal charge policy that's due to time limitations. So moved. Second. Moved by Gordon, second by Tim. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So at this time I would make a motion to approve the school committee, um, excuse me, approve school committee policy for the recommended changes of the policy EF as in Frank D meal charge policy to be implemented for the FY20 school year. So moved. Second. Moved by Gordon, second by Tim. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Unless anybody has anything else I would I think that the, just the last thing I want to say is central office um, through the summer. Um, if you want to meet with one of us, please call ahead because we do take some time off. We haven't had any time off. Um, we're not off this week. We're not off next week. But uh, the 4th of July week, we will. most of us are off. And then the following week, Dr. Williams and I are out for a conference. Then the principals go for their conference, that, uh, with a, what do we just say, the 24th through the 26th. Um, but if anybody wants to meet with us, if anybody needs anything from us, please call the call us or email us. We'll get back to you. Someone will be there. Um, Mondays and Fridays will be probably scarce. Um, and Dr. Williams and I uh, will share. Uh, I'll take on Mondays and she'll take on Thursdays for me. So, Dr. Williams, right? Mm -hmm. Or Tuesdays or whatever. But um, we, we go back and forth. Oh, so. So one of us call will ahead. call Ed. One of us will be there. Uh, can I ask you a question, sure. uh, uh, Liz, with regard to the? I know the uh, negotiations ongoing with mm -hmm. the uh, the teachers. Um, whatever, assuming we can come to a conclusion on that sometime over the summer, mm -hmm. we would vote on that at our August meeting, we ideally, that, and then so before we start the. Into September. I thought we had a very good meeting last night. Good. Um, I thought it was a, a, a robust discussion. Um, I thought it was, it went, we were here for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I think we got a lot of things on the table. Um, we, it, I thought it was a good discussion. Um, we put a lot of dates out there for the summer. We understand that people are traveling. This is our busy season for the superintendent's office is the last two weeks in June and probably the first month, September and October, extremely busy for us in the business office. Um, and we know that a lot of people go on vacations in the summer, so we understand that. And our teachers um, are on vacation and it's hard to get these dates. We're hoping that we can get some things done. Um, and usually, um, to be to be frank, usually it comes down to the salary grid. Once we get that straightened out, and once we um, can get that in there, everything pretty much moves ahead. And then Dr. Williams takes over on the language, mm -hmm. um, and we're ready for that. And I thought last night went really well. Good. Um, 
John did a terrific job, and I think that um, there's good conversation going, and we'll keep moving ahead. Excellent. Uh, I Thank have you. One last thing. So, um, one thing I forgot to bring up under the standing subcommittee, since Jenny Kennedy is with the community service, because I know in the last meeting I said we would bring him. Yeah, I'm talking too fast. If we could, we would be bringing it back at this meeting, the June 20th meeting that was the community service as a graduation requirement. It is coming back in the fall at some point, uh, still being tweaked. I, I appreciate that because I think with the new principal, I think give him a, give him a chance to get in here and, and take it all in. So I appreciate that. And, um, uh, so one last thing. So I'm going to, <laughs> I will find out what night works best uh, as far as the, the seventh or the sixth, and then I'll send everybody an email to let them know. Excuse me, what is that workshop time? Uh, the workshop for all of us, and it's going to have quite a few things on it. Oh, and, um, okay. It's either going to be Liz Valerio, and Jim Hardy, maybe one would do half and one with the other half, or it would be just Liz Valerio, which I still don't know. It would be a, no, a number of things. I, I would suggest for perhaps a future workshop. Um, oh, and that's, sorry, uh, No, I was just going to say, since these meetings are conducted, uh, as well as our town meeting, uh, under uh, Robert's Rules of all Order, it would be nice to have a, just a, I know I still look that stuff up. I, I forget the protocol so or what works things. so be nice to have some expert or some reference that we can say okay hey this is how it works you know if do you want the book you, i have uh, yeah i'll take the book no i have one but john we can order we can order a few okay yeah no so, man, we can take that. get one for the school committee um so what time that's one thing i forgot to ask so you want to do it at night so it's five five thirty six for a start time what do you think doodle Doodle it. Well, I want to email her tomorrow since I have a date. Can I just, they can tell me now. Whatever. That's right. Anything? Anything? Just, just, anytime after. We can't really think at this point. It's 830. We've been here since 730. <laughs> okay, so I'll just pick like 530. Okay. Just tell me when to be here. Right. I, I just, okay. I just have to coordinate my travel to make sure yeah. I'm back by then. Please do. Oh. Okay. That shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Okay, well, I want to wish everyone a happy summer. Enjoy it. <coughs> as much beach time or whatever you like to do as possible. And at this time, I would take a motion to adjourn the school committee meeting. Moved. Moved by Tim. Second. Second by Rob. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice summer. Everybody.